Have you ever wondered which plane embodies the ultimate American dream in general aviation? Would it be a classy old bonanza, combining performance and style, or perhaps some military birds from Boeing or Lockheed Martin? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But today, we're reviewing one of the planes many Americans dream of. Not only because of its looks and performance, but also because of its truly amazing story and the unique personality of its designer. Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and in this video, we review the Vans RV6. To understand the popularity of the Vans RV series, we first need to unwind the clock back and explore the early days of kit aircraft. Yeah, in case you didn't know, Vans produces only kit planes, meaning that you buy the plane disassembled, and then, either in your backyard or at the Vans factory, you assemble it. The concept of building your plane using someone's design blueprints wasn't discovered by Vans, no. Actually, we can trace it to the very beginning of aviation. Technically, the Wright Flyer was a home-built aircraft too. Alrighty, if we consider a plane that was built by amateurs using someone's design, then probably the Demoiselle will be the first aircraft whose blueprint was shared in the June 2010 edition of Popular Mechanics. Another term for such aircraft is home-built experimental aircraft, first used somewhere in the early 1950s, and basically it was used to describe something capable of steady flight and built without a commercial goal. And here we come to the first part that made kit planes conquer the hearts of so many talented aviation enthusiasts. Freedom. Ultimate freedom. Since these planes were never intended to be commercially sold, the American government wasn't really interested in regulating what your neighbor was doing in his backyard every Sunday. It was a time when enthusiasts had no boundaries, just the laws of physics. These amazing times gave us such cool airplanes as the Dyke Delta, Stitz SA-2A, and Rutan's Very Vigan. And there were many more, as designers weren't afraid to experiment, fail, adapt, and improve. But one of them made a bold step forward, leading the industry to new heights. Richard Van Grunsven, an American aircraft designer who was already known for his agile wooden birds, or to be precise, the design plans of these birds, made a revolution in kit building when he designed and manufactured the Vans RV3. How? Let's dive deeper. The Vans RV family is a perfect example of continuous improvement. Initially, Van Grunsven designed a modification of the Stitz SA-3 and called it the RV-1. Remember how I mentioned that designers weren't afraid to experiment? Well, the RV-2 was a flop, but the RV-3? The RV-3 was a huge, and I mean truly huge, step forward. It was the first home-built aircraft to have a semi-monocoque aluminum fuselage, making it better in all technical aspects compared to the wood and fabric designs of that time. The RV-3 rapidly gained popularity among builders, and since its introduction in 1971, each new RV series plane has been an improvement on the previous model. The RV-3 was a single-seater, the RV-4 was a tandem two-seater, and the RV-6 is a two-seater too, but side-by-side. -side. Additionally, the RV-6 made as big of a splash as the RV-3 did years ago, and to this day remains the most popular design of the RV family, despite many new models being added to the list. So, why don't we take a closer look at this particular bird? So, having enough experience and feedback from fellow pilots about his RV-3 and RV-4, in 1985, Van Grunsven showed a new plane, the RV-6. Essentially, it was, of course, an improved RV-4, but one thing he was designing for the first time was a cockpit for two in side-by-side -side seating. Well, after a few tries, Richard came up with a plan that featured a 43-inch wide cockpit, which was pretty comfortable for two adults. Of course, it's not a first-class airliner seat size, but hey, the performance of the RV-6 is about the same as the RV-4, which has better aerodynamics because of the tandem seating. Also, the RV-6 was the first Vans aircraft to have an A variant, which, following Vans' naming convention, is a tricycle variant. This allowed Vans to expand the number of potential clients, as the tail dragger era was slowly coming to an end. At its core, the RV3 and RV6 are quite similar. I mean, at the very core, of course. 
Just like almost all Vans airplanes, its fuselage is a 20-foot-long aluminum semi-monocoque that has fixed gear, a T-tail, and plane flaps. Despite having a pretty big engine, the Bird is very light, just 965 pounds empty. Speaking of the engine, this plane has a trusty Lycoming O360, pushing 180 horsepower. It's worth mentioning that another reason why Vans is so popular is that it offers freedom for builders too. Starting from the RV7, you could choose one of two engines, and later Vans started to offer packs of add-ons. For example, one could add a set of advanced avionics to their kit, choose a better prop, pick upholstery from various interior sets, and more. Nonetheless, the Model 6 Lycoming was powerful enough to allow it to cruise at 175 knots and cover over 650 nautical miles, which is quite impressive for a home-built kit. It's not really correct to compare a two-seater to a four-seater, but let me just mention that it's more speed and more range than a Cessna 152 or 172. Also, it's worth mentioning its impressive S-Toll capabilities. This bird needs just a bit less than 500 feet for takeoff and landing, which allows it to visit practically all airfields in the world. But these already impressive numbers can be further enhanced, and there's no bigger aircraft modding community than Vans Pilots. Their forum is even called Van Air Force. And I totally get it. When you don't just go and buy a plane from the dealer but invest thousands of man-hours into building it, you want it to be great. There are dozens or even hundreds of threads where pilots share how they retrofit their RVs. Mods span from prop to tail, with both the fuselage and interior being modified to fit the specific needs of each pilot. Another perk of kit aircraft is that you can build it according to your budget. Of course, there is a minimum amount of money to spend on the fuselage, which is around 50 grand. But then comes the engine, propeller, avionics, maybe a custom interior, and we're looking at around 80 to 100 grand. Of course, you can get this plane secondhand. On tradeaplane.com, there are plenty of options starting from 60 grand, but I wouldn't really pick a used kit plane. Well, I've mentioned the word freedom a couple of times, and it seems like this is the ultimate aviator's dream. Freedom not only in the skies, but also freedom of choice, freedom of routes to take when building your aircraft. This is what Vans Aircraft is all about. Let me know in the comments below why you love your RV if you are a lucky pilot of one of these beautiful birds. Thank you so much for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from above the clouds. Fly safe, and until next time.